Welcome to Heart of the Shepherd. We are in the book of Jeremiah, the last chapter of that book, chapter 52, and we bring to a conclusion our long study of this wonderful prophetic book. I've titled this devotional, A Summary of Lessons from the Book and Prophecies of Jeremiah. Our scripture reading again, the last chapter of Jeremiah, chapter 52. Well, today's scripture reading does conclude our study of Jeremiah's prophecies in the book that bears his name. Our next scripture reading, actually, will consider the book of Lamentations. That also is written by the prophet Jeremiah and records his grief following the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, I know the study and interpretation of prophecy can be challenging but I trust these daily devotionals have simplified the complicated. I certainly would love to hear from you, and you can write to me at Pastor Travis Smith at heartofashepherd.com. I would love to hear from you and your thoughts as we conclude the book of Jeremiah. Well, what a joy then it is to be living in such a time as we're living now in the 21st century. You and I have the privilege of not only studying past prophecies, but we also have the advantage over the world of gleaning from history the ways of the Lord. Now, modern archaeology has only confirmed God's Word. While many cast doubt on the Scriptures, understand that the burden of proof rests with them and not the believer. I would assure you that history is on our side. And we declare with the Apostle Paul, Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Romans 3 and verse 4. The focus of Jeremiah's prophetic ministry moved from the Lord chastening Judah to declaring God's judgment against the Gentile nations, beginning with Egypt in chapter 46 and the Philistines in chapter 47. Employing Babylon as the tool of his judgment, other Gentile nations succumbed to Nebuchadnezzar's army in quick succession. The Moabites, Jeremiah 48, Ammonites and Edomites and nomadic tribes of Arabia all fell to the Chaldeans in Jeremiah chapter 49. And though Nebuchadnezzar reigned as the world leader in his day, Seventy years after Jerusalem's destruction, Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and Persians under King Cyrus. Well, let's look and consider Jeremiah 52. Now here we have, in the first three verses, the reign of Zedekiah, the last king of Judah. Now, the historical narrative in Jeremiah 52 should be familiar if you followed Heart of a Shepherd over the last couple of months. King Zedekiah was the last of a succession of wicked kings who reigned in Jerusalem. Now, his sins, the sins of Zedekiah, provoked the anger of the Lord. And we read in verse 3, his rebellion stirred him to rebel against the king of Babylon. Now remember, the last several kings have been puppets of Babylon, and so no wonder that Nebuchadnezzar decided he had had enough of the rebellion, not realizing he was about to step into prophetic history and fulfill God's prophecies. Now consider with me then in verses 4 through 8, the siege and suffering of Jerusalem. Now, as Jeremiah foretold, Nebuchadnezzar led his army against Jerusalem in verse 4. The city was besieged for nearly two years until the food stores were depleted. And as we notice in verse 6, that the famine was sore in the city so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Now, God's long suffering with the sins of Judah was exhausted and he had determined to deliver that nation to judgment. Well, the walls of Jerusalem were breached, and the soldiers of Judah fled the city with King Zedekiah and his family, as you consider chapter 52 and verses 5 through 7. Now, Babylon's army, we know from our study in 2 Kings 25, Babylon's army pursued Zedekiah, and they captured him near Jericho. 
And then we look at verses 9 through 11, truly a tragic time in the history of Judah. For here we have the sorrow and humiliation of Zedekiah. Now, take it before Nebuchadnezzar to be judged. We read in verses 9 through 10 that the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, along with other leaders of Judah. And then, verses 9 through 10, he commanded that Zedekiah's eyes be put out. Zedekiah, the once proud king of Judah, was blind and led to Babylon in chains where he died a prisoner. And then we have a recap of the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Again, chapter 52 and verses 12 through 30. Now, Jeremiah's prophecies were fulfilled when Jerusalem was destroyed and the palaces and temple plundered and burned. That's recorded in verses 12 through 23. Now, fulfilling the word of the Lord, the people of Judah were taken as captives to Babylon, where we know they lived for 70 years. In fact, only the poorest were left behind, and their task was to serve as vine dressers and for husbandmen, basically keepers of the grapevines and farmers. And then we also have the record of verses 17 through 23 of how Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon took the vessels of the temple and broke them and then transported the metal along with the utensils, pans, and bowls that served in the temple to Babylon. Unable to flee Jerusalem, the chief priests and other leaders of the temple were captured and taken before Nebuchadnezzar in verses 24 through 26. And we read in verse 27 that all were slain. Well, as we look near the sum of this study, in verse 28, we have the record of a census, a census of those Jews who were carried to Babylon. In Nebuchadnezzar's first siege of Jerusalem, we read that there were 3,023 Jews taken to Babylon. Now, no doubt, among them was the young prophet Daniel, whom we will soon study. Now, also, there were 832 Jews taken in Nebuchadnezzar's second siege of Jerusalem, according to verse 29. And then the third and the final siege of Jerusalem, we find that there were 745 souls taken alive and removed to Babylon. Altogether, only 4,600 Jews were taken as captives to Babylon. Well, the last days of Jehoiachin, the deposed king of Judah, are now brought before us in verses 31 through 34. Now, we've also studied this in 2 Kings 25, where the book, now the book of Jeremiah also confirms and concludes with a brief mention of King Jehoiachin becoming an object of grace before evil Merodach, who succeeded Nebuchadnezzar as king of Babylon. Well, some closing thoughts for you today. We might learn many lessons from our study of Jeremiah's prophecies and histories. I take comfort in understanding that the Lord has revealed that he is long-suffering with sinners and, in Peter's words, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. His patience, that is, the Lord's patience with Israel and Judah, evidence his longing to see his people love, trust, and obey his word and commandments. However, we were also reminded that the Lord is just and holy. Israel and Judah broke their covenant with the Lord, and they disobeyed his law and commandments. In mercy, God sent prophets to call the nation to repent, but we know from our study that they despised the prophets and they continued their wickedness until there was no remedy. Nebuchadnezzar served the Lord's purpose to chasten the Jews, though he remembered his promises and preserved them amid Babylon. Well, like the great and powerful nations of our world today, ancient Babylon's army seemed invincible, and the walls of that great city impenetrable. Nevertheless, no one could save Babylon when the Lord declared his judgment against that nation. Bearing the weight of its wickedness, Babylon, we read, was overcome in a night. 
and reduced to rubble that will be found in our study of Daniel chapter 8. And then finally, a warning. Every nation would do well to remember that no people or nation can stand when the Lord bears the sword of judgment. And surely you and I have cause to pray. I pray for our world and for those that are citizens of my country. Pray for the United States. Without a revival, certainly God's judgment is imminent. Well, the Lord bless you. Thank you for following this heart of a shepherd. And I pray that our study has been a blessing. God bless you and bye-bye.